very different scene outside St George's Chapel now, the panoply of the armed forces have gone away to their duties and the state Bentley awaits Her Majesty the Queen, who may well take leave of particularly Prince Philip's cousins who come from across the Channel and over in their homes in Germany and then members of the royal family will return home to their different homes in accordance with the rules. But a reflective and special time that the Queen was joined by the nation to mark her husband and his service to the United Kingdom. But we are in an extraordinary pandemic and a ceremonial funeral for a member of the royal family who had served in the armed forces has been delivered here in this castle where Prince Philip died only a short time ago. And in that time that has elapsed, the Queen has watched the preparations being made. She has received countless letters from all across the Commonwealth, and we're told they have given her immense strength. And anyone who has endured the death of a life partner will know a little of what the Queen will face, as on behalf of us all, she does what she must always do and represent moments in the nation's life and particularly in our own family lives. And wherever you are in the United Kingdom or around the world, if you have recently also been bereaved during this period of COVID, perhaps you can understand how alone a widow can feel and yet how important it is, as Prince Philip would probably have told her, had he been here today, get on with it, you are loved, there is work to be done. to her apartments in Windsor as the castle guard present arms to her majesty, their colonel in chief. Her majesty accompanied by her lady in waiting. As we watch Her Majesty the Queen returning to the Royal Apartments after saying goodbye to her husband, the Queen and the Royal Family celebrated the life of the Duke of Edinburgh, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a great grandfather. The military bid farewell to their most stalwart supporter, and the nation has said goodbye to the Duke of Edinburgh. And I should say, at this point, as we look at other members of the Royal Family, that 30 were able to attend the service itself. Chapel of St. George. Our, our thanks to Alistair Bruce, our royal commentator, for so poignantly, ably, and beautifully describing the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh. Let's bring in Rihanna Mills, our royal correspondent, uh, who's been watching these proceedings uh, alongside me. And uh, Rihanna, before it all started, uh, you described it perfectly what would happen. It's an altered service, but a uh, a moving, memorable one, and a family one, as we can see now. And at the heart of the service today was a family who, throughout the last week, have taken their own time to reflect on their father, grandfather, and husband, and just how influential he was 
yes, of course, on shaping the monarchy, making sure the institutions stay relevant, but also an inspiration to them all. And in their own ways, they have pledged in the last week to continue that hard work that he did over so many decades, always being there to support the Queen. When we look at the last hour and the ceremony that we've just seen, I think at times it was emotional, poignant. I think due to the music that was chosen by the Duke himself, it was certainly stirring at times. And I would say a true reflection of a man who gave his life to service and duty, an unforgettable character. You could see that in some very unique touches that we saw within the procession, but also a man that is certainly very much grieved by that family who this week have come together to mark that loss together. I think for Her Majesty the Queen, of course, we can't possibly imagine how she was feeling, but this is the first moment that we have seen her since she announced to the world that she was deeply sorrowed to announce the death of her beloved husband. And for one, one moment that particularly stood out to me was as we saw her leaving uh, the Sovereign's entrance, in the state Bentley, the national anthem played as her car was driven behind the back of the procession to follow her husband for one last moment to say her goodbyes, a man who ultimately gave his life to serve her. It was those, those scenes before the service itself as they processed down the hill towards the chapel, some such memorable images there. And you can see that the military gathering in, in the moments before the procession started, marking the important military service that the Duke gave throughout his life. Yes, serving during the Second World War, but then continuing to be 